Let us begin with a word of prayer together. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable and pleasing to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In 2012, I had the opportunity to travel to Atlanta, Georgia, and part of my trip there was to visit the King Center with Ebenezer Baptist Church and all the influence that Martin Luther King Jr. had, not only in that community, but in our country around race relations. You can go into the original church building, and when you walk into the sanctuary of that original church building, they have a running recording of one of Martin Luther King Jr.'s sermons that he preached in that sanctuary. You can walk up the street, you can see his home he grew up in, and then you can see the new church, Ebenezer's new congregation as they outgrew the old one and they have a new one. And we got a chance to visit with their new pastor or newer pastor. We know him now as a Georgia senator, Raphael Warnock. And our group had an hour with Raphael Warnock talking to him about the work at Ebenezer Baptist Church. One of the questions from one of the members of our group said, what's it like living in the shadow of Martin Luther King Jr.'s church, and how do you do church knowing you've got this big shadow of Martin Luther King Jr.'s influence on this church? How do you minister in a place like this? His response was this, what have you done for me lately? We can live off the history of our justice work, or we're either living into the justice work we need to be doing now, or just coast off our past. Raphael Warnock said, justice is about here and now, responding to the issues here and now, and not just gleaning on what we've done in the past. We have to be mindful of what's going on in the world right now, and what is our response to the injustices we see around us. Martin Luther King Jr. in the early 60s made his way to Washington, D.C., and he made his infamous speech, I Have a Dream. Was he preaching just to a handful of people? Was he speaking just to a, a small group? No, he was in the big square. 200,000 plus people hearing that speech was a generational changing speech, a country changing speech about how we think about who we are, the color of our skin, our interactions with one another. The bold acts of justice that people make matter. They make a difference. Brandy shared a, a story from the Gospel of Mark. It's one of my favorite stories in Mark's Gospel. It's in chapter 2. It's early in. So we get in Mark's Gospel... We don't have all the birth narratives. It starts with just Jesus and meeting John the Baptist on the water of the River Jordan in chapter 1. And by chapter 2, Jesus is out healing the crowds. There's, I mean, activity in Mark happens fast. We get to chapter 2, there's already a huge crowd around a house that Jesus is in. And everybody wants to be there because Jesus is doing remarkable things. We're only in chapter 2 and all this grand stuff's already happening. And these individuals have a friend... And as Brandy said, word on the street is, Jesus can do something for my friend. Now, one of the cool things about the story is this person's paralyzed. They can't get to Jesus. Maybe their goal was to get to Jesus, bring Jesus back. There's all kinds of methods they could have done, but they decide to carry their friend to where Jesus is. And the links they go to to make sure that their friend sees Jesus is pretty remarkable. They somehow hoist him on the roof of this structure. And I can imagine being inside the house when you start having these little dirt clods fall to the ground. And you look up and there's this face looking through a hole. Yeah, that's Jesus down in there. And they open it up wider and wider and they finally lower this person down. These four individuals that brought their friend took some risks. They had to step outside their comfort zones to help a person they cared about. Maybe a word I would use today is they accompanied their friend. And justice work is about the accompaniment of people 
walking with people, sharing with people, not doing something for someone, but doing something with someone. We realize, well, they need this. No, actually, we need this. It was interesting enough that as I was preaching on justice today that I, uh, some of you may get the daily online reflection from Richard Rohr, and some of you may have read that reflection this morning if you get that daily reflection. He talked about one of the, the hard parts about Christianity in America is that over time, as we've been here, we have individualized our faith because he said it would gets to the point where it's just about my faith and my spirituality and what I'm doing and we have forgotten about the communal dimension of what faith is all about. You see, in Mark chapter 2, these four individuals that accompanied their friend to Jesus knew that the social code of the day was if there is a person in need, the community is responsible for this person. The, the community reaches out with open arms and love and grace and says, you are a part of us. We, were, we are not whole unless all of us are whole. And there is power in these four friends and what they do and how they take on and share life with this friend that they want healed and to have a different life experience. It's a metaphor for everything we encounter in our world. All the injustices we see around economic injustice, sexuality injustice, racial injustice. Do we want our friends to have a whole life, a full life? Or do we just walk on by and think, well, things will eventually get better? The things we know is that People that are in power and people that have privilege don't really want to give that up very easily. They're not very quick to say, oh, let me give you some of my power. Let me give you some of my privilege. We'll just kind of pass it around. It's going to be great. Most people don't like to give up their comfort places and the things that make them feel like life is okay. Life feels safe. Life feels all right for me. Not realizing when we have power and privilege that those that don't have power and privilege 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 28, 30, 31 days a month, they are thinking about the injustices they feel every day by comments that other people make or the lack of comments that people make or the lack of actions that people make on their behalf with them and for them. Martin Marty, who is an author that's written a great deal about church and public life, says that church has a responsibility to be actively involved in the public life, except that the church holistically has left a lot on the table and a lot of action has left and gone undone in our society. So as I talked about voting, he says, you know, less than half of the people vote in our country when there's an election that takes place. And then we expect change to happen and the church is almost, he says, the least mobilized entity in our country in terms of public action, social justice, enactment of rights, of walking with people to create justice in our land. He starts thinking about, Martin Marty does, the potential of what the church does when it moves outside of its comfort zones, moves to place where we have to risk something of ourselves with and for other people. St. Andrew Christian Church, probably membership, probably around 350 people. Imagine if we showed up somewhere with 350 people at the door, what someone might say. Well, that's a lot of people. Well, what if St. Andrew Christian Church and Second Baptist Church of Olathe together decided to show up somewhere... We take our 350 people and there are 150, 200 people. All of a sudden we've got 500 people sitting at someone's door and says, we want you to hear what we have to say. And you take St. Andrew Christian Church and Second Baptist Church and maybe you take First Christian Church Olathe and you take their 150 people and you add it to our 500 people we've already collected from 200 or two other churches and we've got three churches. And we start adding the churches together when we have a united cause around something we want to accomplish significant things begin to happen. 
justice begins to kind of move from the possibility to reality when we add power to it. When we add power to it, it means it involves people and money. Those two things create power. When we do powerful things together, it means we are try to be united around a common voice and a common cause. And one of the things the church has not done, we have so many churches and congregations and denominations and configuration is how we call ourselves Christian in this country, that there is not some common ways that we interact and do work together. But we are grateful for organizations that push us a little bit. Language that's often used in justice circles, and I'm not the first to use it, not the first to say it. And even in this community, there are places where we enact mercy for people, and there's places where we enact justice for people. If a person comes up to the doors of the church and says, I need some assistance with something, if we provide them a food card or a gas card or something to kind of help them out in the moment, we are providing them mercy. It's an immediate need we're responding to in that moment. But it doesn't change the fact that there'll be more people coming to the door, knocking, asking for assistance. We have kind of put a, a small little band-aid on a larger scope of homelessness, lack of economic resources, a disparity in wealth. And by handing out a card, here's some food for the next day, it's a drop in the bucket. But we can align with an organization like More Squared in the greater Kansas City area. And More Squared is a systemic organization that works on systemic injustices and trying to solve systemic injustices. We signed cards back in January trying to support the expansion of Medicaid. One of the focuses of More Squared is to build up enough energy, enough voice of people in the state that legislature will hear the importance of responding to Medicaid expansion and better health care within our state. They are working on better transparency and accountability to our police forces throughout all of the greater KC metro area. And in some cases, trying to change from statewide control to local control. They're trying to do all these kinds of things. They can't do it by one person, one congregation. It takes a lot of people to do that. We have a, a newer organization that's working in Johnson County called the Good Faith Network. They're trying to eliminate homelessness in Johnson County, trying to expand resources for mental health. And they're trying to begin learning how to respond to affordable housing in a county that is prolific with wealth, you have demographics within our county that cannot afford to live in our own county when they work in this county. A food card, a handout, it's not going to get there. It takes more than one person, more than one congregation, more than one voice to make that happen. And in Mark's gospel, I can't get this paralyzed friend of mine to where I need my friend to be. It takes a group of people, a group of people to lift that mat and say, we're going we're to take this mat together and together we're going to help make a difference in the world. And the, the key to all of this is if it stays up here in our head, if we logically think, I think this needs to happen and I think this about this issue, it somehow has to move from our head to the emotional side of where we are. When we have emotion and passion behind something, it's hard to stop that train once it gets started. It's one thing to have kind of a logical thought about something. When I get passionate about something, when I get excited about something, you better watch out. And when a congregation gets excited about something, you better watch out. When you got that much passion and energy behind something you believe in, it's a powerful thing to see happen. But why justice, we would say? All you got to do is turn on the TV, check out your feed on your Facebook page or your Instagram feed, listen to the news on TV, on the internet, wherever it might be. And we can easily put our blinders on and 
thankful life's okay. And we're actually honest with ourselves, it's not. There's a lot that needs work. And we can spread ourselves thin and do a little bit here and a little bit there and might help a little bit, but maybe we focus in our energy of these are things that are significant to who we are, to this community of faith, to this group of people. And let's put our passion and energy around those things. One person can't do it, but four people can carry somebody. But what if we have 350 people ready to carry, ready to accompany, ready to do significant work in our community? Man, watch out. St. Andrew's coming. I kind of get excited about this stuff. You can't tell. You can't tell. I don't want us to leave our power at the door. I don't want to leave our potential somewhere in the closet. Well, they've got some stuff back in there. I've got all kinds of stuff in there, and I don't know what's in there. But we need to be out in front, visible, sharing our life, our values, our importance in the community we are called to live in. We had opportunity yesterday, sent an email yesterday. Rebecca Oval Gary said there is a, a Kansas uh, legislative hearing happening on a, a bill related to trans, and can we get something out? So I got something out, and we have a chance to respond as a community to that. We have a chance to make a difference for families that might see harm from legislation that is intended to harm people and not bring health and wholeness to people. Every day there is an opportunity. My grandfather said, a person will do the best they can with what they have, invite others to do the same, and leave the results in God's hands. Now my best on some days, I'm conquering the world. And my best some days, I'm barely getting out of bed. But every day I'm going to give my very best for who God created me to be. And I'm going to invite others to join me. When that happens, significant things happen in God's name. Why justice? We can't afford not to do it. It's who we were created to be. It's how we're to be in community with one another. When we bind together and we see our potential as a community of faith, We've already done significant things, but more awaits. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream. All of us have a dream. When we combine our dreams together, we start carrying people. We start accompanying people. We actually don't talk about justice. We're actually living justice.